This video is brought to you by the Program Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PMICE. PMICE is a program management office within Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos PMICE has developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines and sailors in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this program office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper assembly, use, and care of the Plate Carrier Generation 3, referred to from here on as the PC Gen 3. The PC Gen 3 initial fielding is slated for the fourth quarter of FY19. The PC Gen 3 will be fielded to infantry and infantry-like MOSs. For these MOSs, the PC Gen 3 will be replacing two legacy body armor systems, the Improved Modular Tactical Vest, or the IMTV, and the plate carrier, simply known as the PC. Though the actual carriers are being replaced by the PC Gen 3, at this time the existing Enhanced Small Arms Protective Inserts, or ESAPIs, will remain in use with the PC Gen 3. Before we start the inventory and assembly of the PC Gen 3, I want to tell you about some of the features of it. First, it is 23% lighter than the PC and 45% lighter than your IMTV. This reduction in weight, along with the streamlined design, provides our Marines and sailors with improved range of motion, fit, and mobility. One way we reduced the weight was by eliminating most of the pouch attachment ladder systems, or PALs, commonly referred to as MOLLE. Instead, your PC Gen 3 incorporates laser cut technology. Additionally, donning and doffing the vest is easier and faster using the tube adapters. The PC Gen 3 will be available in eight sizes. That's three more sizes than the previous vest. The sizes include the extra small short, the small short, small long, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. The three additional sizes are the extra small short, the small short, and the small long. In order to have operational vests in these three sizes, we also have three new ESAPIs in these sizes. Here are mock-ups of the three new ESAPI sizes. To complement the eight vest sizes available, the PC Gen 3 has three cummerbund sizes available. That is small, medium, and large. This allows you to wear a vest that fits correctly as well as a cummerbund that fits correctly. For example, a Marine may require a large vest yet a medium cummerbund. The PC Gen 3 allows for that. We will discuss sizing later in this video. Additionally, the side plate pocket comes in the standard 6x8 size. However, for shorter stature Marines and Sailors, a 6x6 option is available. The 6x6 side plate pockets will come issued with the extra small short, the extra small, and the small short sizes. Finally, one of the biggest improvements is the modularity of the PC Gen 3. Throughout the research and development phase, Marines identified the need for various configurations. We listened and we incorporated these configurations into the design. Almost all of the components of the PC Gen 3 can be worn with each other depending on the Marine's preferred configuration. Let's take a look at the various configurations that the PC Gen 3 can be worn in. First we have the tactical configuration. The tactical configuration provides the wearer with the most opportunity to attach pouches and equipment utilizing the laser cuts on the front, sides, and the PAL's webbing on the back. The wearer is protected by the front, back, and side ESAPIs, as well as the inserted soft armor. As you can see, the side plate pockets can be attached low, high, forward, or back on the cummerbunds depending on the Marine's torso and preference. Starting with the front of the vest at the top, you'll notice that the PC Gen 3 incorporates the side release buckles, has a location for your nameplate. Here's all the laser cuts we discussed. This is how we'll get in and out of the vest using the tube adapters. Here we have the cummerbund adapters. As we take a look at the side of the vest, you'll notice that the side plate pocket is incorporated on the inside of the cummerbund. The cummerbund incorporates the laser cut technology. Looking at the back of the vest, you'll see the remaining PALs followed by the laser cuts. All the adjustments will be made from the back of the vest. If I need to tighten it or make it larger, I will just simply pull on the back of the cummerbunds.
Next we have the low profile configuration. This configuration provides the wearer the same level of armor protection in the front and in the back as the tactical configuration. The low profile configuration was primarily designed to be worn with outside plates in order to provide increased comfort and ease of use for vehicle crewmen and reconnaissance marines. However, side plate pockets can be attached if needed. The low profile configuration is accomplished by removing the front and back carriers and utilizing the inner vest with the inner cummerbund. Note that the removal of the front and back carriers results in a reduced amount of area to attach pouches and equipment. However, the outer carriers can be reconfigured into a load bearing rig capable of holding side plate pockets that can be quickly donned when needed. Finally, we have the load bearing configuration. This configuration utilizes this harness and the load bearing panel that comes directly off the tactical configuration. This configuration provides no ballistic protection unless you retain the side ESAPIs. However, as mentioned earlier, it allows the Marine who is wearing the low profile configuration to quickly don it when needed, such as when exiting a vehicle in a ballistic threat situation where the Marine requires side plate protection and or any items attached to the load bearing panel. For select units, the Marine Corps is also fielding the PC Gen 3 in a law enforcement version. As you can see, the vest is black Vice Coyote and contains the same components as the PC Gen 3. However, this version comes with an additional set of cummerbunds that contain soft armor. Based on unit SOP, the low profile configuration of the law enforcement version may be worn under the uniform. Before we inspect and assemble the PC Gen 3, let's take a moment to discuss sizing. Your vest carrier size is determined by your eSAPI size and your cummerbund size is determined by your waist size. We will now demonstrate the proper technique to determine what size vest and cummerbund you should be issued. First, place the ESAPI centered against the Marine's chest. The top of the plate will be placed within one inch of the supersternal notch. This is the bony V at the center of your collarbone. One inch is approximately the size of the first joint of your thumb. A correctly sized ESAPI will have the outer edges bisecting the wearer's nipples. A plate that goes beyond is too big, likewise a plate that is inside is too small. For the cummerbund, we will use the chart depicted in a quick reference guide. Here we see that a waist size smaller than 31 inches will require a small cummerbund, 31 to 35 inches will require a medium cummerbund, and finally a waist exceeding 35 inches will require a large cummerbund. The measurement is taken across the stomach at the navel. It's important to remember not to overlap the measuring tape when taking the measurement. Keep in mind that it is perfectly acceptable for a Marine to wear a certain size vest yet wear a different size cummerbund. Supply will issue the PC Gen 3 according to these two measurements. We are now ready to conduct an inventory and inspection of the PC Gen 3. As you conduct the inventory, you will also check for serviceability. To save time, I've already inspected each component. However, you will check for tears, cuts, loose or missing stitching, serviceability and functionality of the hook and loop or the Velcro, the pouch attachment ladder system webbing, or the molly webbing, the straps and buckles and tubes. Also be sure to inspect that the soft armor is present in the front and back inner carriers as well as the side plate pockets. Remember, if you are being issued one of the law enforcement versions, ensure that the additional cummerbund has a soft armor inserted. Please note that all the components with the exception of the rear cummerbund adapter, the tube adapters, and the shoulder straps are sized items. The PC Gen 3 consists of the following components. The inner vest front. Notice that the label includes the component name and the size. The inner vest rear. These are used in the tactical and the low profile configurations. It is the inner vest that contain the soft armor. We have two inner cummerbunds also used in the low profile configuration. Next we have the load bearing panel. This is used in both the tactical configuration and the load bearing configuration. Here we have the outer vest front carrier and the outer vest back carrier. These are used in a tactical configuration. We have two outer cummerbunds also used in the tactical configuration. Notice that there is no soft armor inside of these cummerbunds. We have two tube adapters, two shoulder straps, one cummerbund adapter, one harness that is used in a load bearing configuration, two six by eight side plate pockets, 
As mentioned earlier, there is also a 6x6 option available for shorter stature marines and sailors. A repair kit. And finally, your PC Gen 3 comes with a quick reference guide that contains the same assembly procedures we're going to follow in this video. The guide also includes care instructions. Though not issued as part of the PC Gen 3, let's go ahead and inspect the eSAPIs that you will use with your PC Gen 3. You're simply going to get into a quiet place, put the plate by your ear, and you're going to torque it. You're listening for any sounds of crackling or crumbling. If you hear any of that, simply return it back to the issue facility for a replacement. Next, we're going to check the edges of the plate. I'm checking for crumbling or cracking. Same thing, if you hear any of that, turn it in for a replacement. Before we go any further, let's discuss the soft armor that is inserted in both the inner front and back carriers. Though the soft armor is not sewn in, which allows for replacement armor to be inserted, at no time should you don the vest without the soft armor inserted. The soft armor works in conjunction with the ESAPIs to provide vital protection against small arms and fragmentation. While in the tactical configuration, in addition to inserting the ESAPIs, the wearer must always ensure that the inner vests that contain the soft armor are inserted into the outer carriers. Now that the inventory and inspection are complete, Let's assemble the PC Gen 3. When you receive your PC Gen 3, most likely it will be partially pre-assembled in the tactical configuration, requiring you to attach the cummerbunds. There may be occasion where you have to assemble it from scratch, so I'm gonna do just that, assemble it from scratch. I will assemble it first in the tactical configuration, then demonstrate how to transition into the low profile configuration, and finally into the load bearing configuration. There are two general rules when it comes to assembling and wearing body armor. The labels always face the body and hard armor is always worn in front of and on top of soft armor. Keep that in mind when inserting the inner vest into the outer vest. The labels will always face the body. The same goes for when attaching the cummerbund. Assembly of the tactical configuration. Start by unzipping the bottom of the outer vest rear and insert the inner vest rear and push it all the way up. Make sure the inner vest shoulders are fully seated into the outer vest shoulder area. Once it's fully seated and the bottom edge is aligned, enclose the inner vest by zipping up the outer vest. Repeat the process for the outer and inner vest front. Holding the load bearing panel, Open the front flap at the bottom and fully insert it into the kangaroo pocket of the outer vest front. With the load bearing panel still open, install both tactical tube adapters into place. They are not left and right specific. Once complete, close the front panel. Next, grasp the top of the load bearing panel along with the buckles and place them under the elastic channels. These buckles must be under the elastic channels for the quick release feature to perform properly. Now let's install the rear cummerbund adapter onto the outer vest rear. Line up the rear cummerbund adapter just above the third row of pals from the bottom. Start by weaving the rear cummerbund webbing through the third row of pals and back into the laser cutouts on the adapter. Continue to work your way down until you can tuck the webbing into the last row of the adapter's laser cutout. Tucking this in secures the rear cummerbund adapter in place. It's now time to install the outer cummerbund. Lift the flap of the rear cummerbund adapter that you just installed. Place the outer cummerbund under the channel and secure in place with the hook and loop. For initial assembly, start off with the hook and loop panel on the cummerbund aligned with the channel's outer edge. If you need to make the cummerbund larger during fitting, Keep in mind that you cannot have more than one and a half inches of the hook and loop exposed on either side. Next, connect the front of the vest to the rear by placing the front carrier on top of the rear carrier. Secure the hook and loop and connect the buckles. We now need to install the side plate pockets. They will be placed on the body side of the outer cummerbund. Because there are multiple rows and columns of laser cutouts, you can place them high, low, forward or back on the cummerbund, however keep in mind that to be most effective they should be placed high in the armpit. 
As you did with the rear cummerbund adapter, tuck the webbing into the last slot of the plate pocket to secure in place. Because it's easier to assemble your PC Gen 3 with the plates out, I'll now go back and show you how to properly install your eSappies. Unzip the outer carrier front and locate the dedicated plate pocket and pull the flap open. Insert your hard armor into the pocket, ensuring the strike face faces towards the threat. Once it's fully seated, fold the flap down and around the bottom of the plate and secure the hook and loop flap. Zip up the outer carrier and repeat the process for the outer carrier rear. Now that you know how to assemble your PC Gen 3 into the tactical configuration, I will now demonstrate how you can transition your PC Gen 3 into the low profile configuration. Remember, this is primarily for vehicle crewmen and reconnaissance marines. Assembly of the low profile configuration. Start by unzipping the front and rear outer carriers and removing the ESAPIs and the inner carriers. Before we go further, let's insert the ESAPIs into the inner carriers. Remember, never operate in the low profile configuration without your ESAPIs inserted. Start by opening the front flap of the inner vest rear. Locate the secondary flap and pull it down, exposing the plate pocket. Insert your eSappy and push it up as far as it will go. The plate does not go in the same compartment as the soft armor is in. Tuck the plate pocket flap under the plate and secure the hook and loop. Repeat this process for the inner vest front. Now that both the front and rear eSappies are installed, let's go back to assembling the low profile configuration. Starting with the rear carrier, Open the back flap exposing the hook and loop area. Attach both inner cummerbunds to the hook and loop area. As you did with the tactical, for initial assembly, align the hook and loop within the rear panel. They can be adjusted during fitting. Open the flap of the rear carrier shoulder strap exposing the hook area. Place the shoulder of the front carrier on top of the shoulder of the rear carrier. Open the flap of the front carrier shoulder strap and bring the flap from the rear carrier down on top of the hook area. Finally, secure the connection by placing the front carrier's flap down on top of the rear carrier's flap. Repeat this process for the other side. Holding the front carrier, open the front flap exposing the hook area. Connect both inner cummerbunds to the exposed hook area leaving the two loops on either side exposed. These loops are there in case you want to have the benefit of using the tactical tube adapters to don and off the vest in the low profile configuration. Here's how you can do that using one of the tube adapters and the tube from the repair kit. Assembly of the load-bearing configuration. If you're one of those Marines or sailors who chooses to operate your PC Gen 3 in a low-profile configuration, you will need to build out your load-bearing configuration. Remember, you're going to need to assemble this during your mission prep time so you can have it readily available if and when you need your side plate protection and or the gear attached to the load-bearing panel. Using the remaining parts from the tactical configuration, disengage the tube adapters. Unattach the rear cummerbund adapter from the outer vest rear. 
Next, remove the load bearing panel from the outer vest front by disengaging the shoulder buckles and lifting the front panel and pulling the load bearing panel out from the kangaroo pouch. Also remove the tube adapters. Center the tube adapters on the hook area of the load bearing panel and close the flap. Using the buckles on the harness, attach the harness to the load bearing panel. Ensuring the labels will all be facing the body, run the webbing coming from the bottom of the harness through the two metal rings on the rear cummerbund adapter and adjust to the desired length. For added protection, we have decided to retain certain components of the IMTV. Here we have the yoke and collar, the throat protector, the rifle bolster, and the yib-yab strap. If you desire, or if your unit leadership requires it, you can easily incorporate any or all of these components into your PC Gen 3. Here's how. Start off by placing the yoke and collar around your neck on your shoulders. Place your PC Gen 3 on top. The weight of the PC Gen 3 will keep it in place. Next, you're going to grab your throat protector and put it in place, ensuring that the hook and loop is securely fastened around the yoke and collar. Here you have your rifle bolster. You can place it on either side, but you want to put it on your shooting side. So I'll place it right here. Again, the weight of your vest will hold it in place. And finally, if you opt to use the yib yab strap, you would attach it the same way you did on the PC on the IMTV. Simply undo the side release buckle at the shoulder, find the little metal ring, and you would attach it accordingly. We will now demonstrate donning the PC Gen 3, acquiring the proper fit, and then doffing the PC Gen 3. We will do so in all three configurations. Starting with the tactical configuration, there are several ways to don your PC Gen 3. You can undo one side of the cummerbunds by disengaging the tube adapter and pulling the vest over your head and shoulder. You can also disengage one of the shoulder buckles while opening one side of the cummerbund. When using this method, ensure that the hook and loop is properly reset in the shoulder area. You can disengage both sides of the cummerbund and slip the PC Gen 3 over your head and re-engage the tube adapters. Now that your PC Gen 3 is on, let's discuss proper fit. Starting at the top, Make sure the front and back carriers are even and that the front e-sappy is properly seated just below the supersternal notch. Considering that the first joint of your thumb is approximately one inch, if you place the first joint into the supersternal notch, the tip of your thumb should just touch the top of the e-sappy. If the front or back carrier need to be raised or lowered, make the adjustment using the shoulder straps. The cummerbund should be snug but not to the point where it hampers your breathing. All cummerbund adjustments are made in the back. Ensure that you do not have more than one and a half inches of the hook and loop exposed. If the carrier is the right size, however, after adjusting the cummerbund, it is still too small or too big, return the cummerbund for the appropriate size. As stated earlier, it is acceptable to wear a different size cummerbund than the vest size. The side plate pocket should be placed high under your arm, yet still comfortable. You can easily move the pocket up, down, forward, or back using the laser cuts. Now let's discuss doffing your PC Gen 3 in the tactical configuration. In an emergency situation, such as being submerged in water, upon entry, disengage one side of the cummerbund and use the opposite hand to disengage the quick release buckle at the shoulder, and while still holding the buckle and the front carrier, pull the vest off your shoulder. You can also use this method for non-emergency situations. I want to reiterate a point I made earlier during the assembly portion of the video. If you fail to place the buckle under the elastic channel, when doffing the vest in an emergency situation, this is what will occur. 
The load bearing panel will break away, however the front carrier may still be attached, causing you to have to pull again, wasting valuable time. In a non-emergency situation, you can doff your vest in the opposite manner that you donned it. Now let's don, fit, and doff the low profile configuration. As with the tactical configuration, there are several ways to don the low profile configuration. Choose what works best for you. For demonstration purposes, we will use the over the head method. As you can see, this configuration does not have the buckles to secure at the shoulder. So as demonstrated during the assembly portion of the video, ensure that you fully secure the hook and loop flaps in the correct order. A properly fitted low profile configuration is similar to the tactical. The front back should be even with the plate within one inch of the supersternal notch. The cummerbund should be snug and all adjustments are made in the back. Again, ensure no more than one and a half inches of hook and loop is exposed. Now let's discuss doffing the low profile configuration. In an emergency situation such as being submerged in water, upon entry, disengage one side of the cummerbund and use the opposite hand to disengage the hook and loop at the shoulder and while still holding the flap of the inner vest, pull the vest off your shoulder. You can also use this method for non-emergency situations. Finally, we have the load bearing configuration. As mentioned earlier, this configuration was primarily designed to be worn when needed over the low profile configuration. If you opt to use the low profile vest because you are a vehicle crewman, prior to departing on your mission, build the load bearing configuration with the leftover components from the tactical configuration and simply keep it in arm's reach once inside the vehicle. Keep in mind that you can wear the load bearing configuration with or without side plates. For donning, simply place it on top of your low profile vest using whichever method works for you. To remove, again, use whichever method you are most comfortable with. Please refer to the QRG to ensure you are properly caring for your PC Gen 3. Marine Corps Systems Command produced this video in order to demonstrate the proper assembly, use, and care of your PC Gen 3. There are several other training videos on Syscom's YouTube channel that demonstrate the proper form, fit, and function of select infantry combat equipment such as the USMC pack and the sleep system. Go check them out. For more information regarding your PC Gen 3 or any other infantry combat equipment, please contact the program office at pm underscore ice at usmc.mil.